you today, Essie. It's such a hot day outside. Well, I've got all those new orders. I went out and just got a bunch of them. My supposed they keeps up. He'll have to be opening a store soon. That's what Emma said last night. And I said, no, I want to be a dancer. The only problem with dancing is that it takes such a long time. You've been studying for so long. Well, only eight years. After all, Mother, you started writing plays eight years ago. We started around the same time, didn't we? Yes, but you shouldn't count my first two years. I was learning how to play. I think the kid needs money. Okay, Miss Essie. Oh, thanks, Reba. I'll bring some right in. Mother, I want you to try one. Did you finish the second act, Miss Sycamore? What, Reba? I said, did you finish the second act? Oh, no. I just got Cynthia entering a monastery. She was working at the strip club, wasn't she? Uh, yes, but she gets tired of the strip club, and there's this monastery, so she goes there instead. And they let her in? Oh, yes, I've made it this Thursday, so anybody can get in. So she arrives on Visitor's Day and just stays. You mean she stays all night? Oh, yeah, she stays six years. Six years? Why? I bet she busts that monastery wide open. Mr. Vinna. Yeah! Mr. Vinna, can you bring one of the skyrockets, please? I want to show them to Miss Sycamore. Sure! Penny, you got the CD from the fire. There are minutes. You can sell it for ten strings for a set. Isn't that bad? Yes. Uh, Paul, dear. Were you ever in a monastery? Well, um, no. I, I wasn't. But wait till you see the new skyrocket we made. Red stars, then gold stars, and then bombs, and then a balloon. Mr. Davina called the balloon. Oh, Mr. Davina. Love to enter the monastery, what would you do? Oh, well, well, I, I don't know, Miss Sycamore. <laughs> it's been so long. Miss <laughs> Alice going to be home for dinner tonight? I don't know, maybe. Well, she's only been home one night this week. Yes, I know. Let's see. Six. And Mr. DePena. And Madam Colnhoff. That makes two. Six plus two. Eight. Right. away for a while and go back to the war play. Oh, the war play. I've always loved that one. <laughs> They'll be better when they're harder, Mother, but try them. I want to see what you think. Oh, they look lovely. What do you call them? I think I'll call them love dreams. That's nice. I'm going back to the war play, Essie. Oh, are you, Mother? Yes, I seem to have gotten myself into a monastery. I can't get out. Oh, well, I'm sure I'll come to you. Remember how you got out that brothel? <laughs> the snakes look hungry. Did Reba feed them? I don't know. Reba, did you feed the snakes? No, Donald's coming tonight, and he always brings flies with him. Well, make sure you feed them soon, and you know how fussy Grandpa is about them. Yes, ma'am. Miss Dedicator was right out the moon. It was too close to the powder. You want a love drink, Father? Put on the table. No, thank you. I I'm going to walk. Uh, I'm going back to the war play, Paul. Oh, but, but that's nice. Put the blue star, then the gold star, then the You know, Madame Gonkoff says I'm her most promising pupil. You'd think with 40 monks and one girl, something would happen.
labor play, religious play, sex play. I know it's here somewhere. Hey, Reba, what have we got for dinner? I'm about ready to print the menu. Let's see. Cornflakes, watermelon, some of these candies that Essie made, and some kind of meat. I forget. Well, if I'm going to take the candy around after dinner, I'd better print up the descriptive matter now. Do you think anybody reads those things, Ed, that you put in the candy boxes? Oh, here's the war play, Poison Gas. Oh, that must be Donald. Look at Reba's smile. The boyfriend, eh, Reba? Hi, Reba. Hi, Donald. Hello, everyone. Hi, Donald. How you been? Pretty good. How have you been, Mr. Sycamore? Just fine. Uh, Donald? Yes, ma'am. Were you ever in a monastery? No, I don't go to a place very much. I'm on relief. Of course. Here are the flies, Reba. I got a big mess of them today. You sure did. So I see you've been working, Mrs. Sycamore. Yes, indeed, John. How's Grandpa? Very well. He's uh, down in Columbia this afternoon, the commencement exercises. Well, sir, you should have been there. That's all I can say. You should have been there. What's a nice commencement, Grandpa? <clears throat> oh, wonderful. Better than last year. You don't know how lucky you are, snakes. Was it a big class, Grandpa? How many were there? Oh, about two acres. Everybody graduated. And much funnier commencement speeches than last year. Uh, Donald, will you tell Reba that Grandpa's home and we won't be waiting for Miss Alice? Yes, ma'am. Reba, Grandpa's home and we can have dinner now. Today, Grandpa. Evening, Grandpa. Evening, Mr. Pinna. Didn't we make a good skyrock today, Mr. Pinna? We certainly did. Wonder why they don't have fireworks. Well, they don't make enough noise. You can take a good commencement orator, and he'll draw down a whole carpet of fireworks. And say just as much too. Don't the graduates ever say anything? No. They just sit there in their cap and nightgowns, get their diplomas, and 40 years from now, they suddenly say, where am I? Oh, good evening, Grandpa. <clears throat> Have a nice day. Good evening, Grandpa. Have a nice day. Can I give you a kiss? Excuse me. I'll have a tomato, too. No, I could use one of these this afternoon. Mother? No, thanks, dear. Father? What? Oh, no, thanks. Ed, play something. OK. But I don't know anybody. It was for you, though. It had your name on it. Huh. Well, where is it? Oh, I don't know. Mother, where's Grandpa's letter? What? The letter that came for Grandpa? You know where it is? Uh, I don't know. Well, did you see what was wrong? Oh, yes, it was on the front. Well, who was it? The United States government. Really? I wonder what they want. There was one before that, too. There are a couple of them. Hmm. When they won't come, I wish you'd give them to me. Of course, Grandpa. I think I'll go up to Westchester tomorrow, do a little snake. God is the state, but state is God. What's that? God is the state, the state is God. Who says that? Trust me. Oh. Well, that's all right. I thought you said it. You know, that's good for printing. It's nice and short. G O D space I F space T H E. And so the beautiful princess came into the palace and kissed her mother and her father and her grandfather. Hello, darling. Hello, Grandpa. And what do you think? They turned into the Sycamore family. Surprise! Oh, Alice, I like it. Oh, do you? It's new, isn't it? It looks nice and summery. Where'd you get it? Oh, I took a walk during lunch hour. You've been taking a lot of walks lately. That's the second you dressed this week. Why, I just like to brighten up the office a little bit. Now, what's new around here in the way of plays, snakes, ballet dancing, and fireworks? Dad, I bet you've been in that cellar all day. What? I I'm going back to the war play, Alice. Oh, really, Mother? Oh, Ed, play Alice that Beethoven thing you wrote. 
$28.50, wasn't it, Essie? Yes, sir. If you please. Now, Mr. Vanderbilt, you realize there's quite a penalty for never filing an income tax return. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Well? Uh, suppose I pay you this money. Now, mind you, I'm not saying I'm going to pay it, but just for the sake of argument, what does the government do for me? What do you mean? Well, for instance, I can go to a Macy's and buy something. There it is, I see it. What does the government give me? Well, it gives you everything. It, it protects you. What ground? How do you think we keep up the army and navy? All those battleships. Battleships? We haven't used battleships since the Spanish-American War. And what did we get out of that? Cuba. And we gave that back. <laughs> oh, honestly, Mr. Henderson, I would pay for something if it was a little more sensible. Sensible? What about a Congress and the Supreme Court and President? We've got to pay them, don't we? Oh, not with my money, no, sir. Now look here, Mr. Van Hoff. I'm not here to argue with you. All I know is that you haven't paid an income tax and you've got to pay it. Then have to show me. We don't have to show you. I just told you. All those buildings down Washington and, and the Constitution and, and interstate commerce. Oh, the Constitution was paid for long ago. And interstate commerce? What is interstate commerce anyhow? <sighs> there are 48 states. See? And without interstate commerce, nothing would get from one state to another, see? Why not? Do they have fences? No, they haven't got fences. They've got laws. Well, I may pay about $75, but that's really all it's worth, Mr. Henderson. You'll pay every cent of it like everyone else. Hey, Essie, listen to this a minute. And, and let me tell you another thing, Mr. Benderhoff. You go to jail if you don't pay. You hear me? That's the law. You think, if you think you're bigger than the law, well, You've got another thing coming. You're no better than anyone else, and the sooner you get that through your big, thick head, the better. You'll hear from the government. That's all I have to say. Look out for the snake! Jeez! How is that? Fine. And um, how did that sound to you folks? Uh, I liked it. My goodness, he was mad, wasn't he? Oh, it's not his fault. It's just that the whole thing is so silly. He forgot his hat. Say, what size is that hat? Seven and an eight. Just my size. Who was that man anyway? Oh, now this must be Mr. Kirby. Make sure this time. Yes, I will. I hope he's still looking. How do you do? Is this Mr. Anthony Kirby Jr.? Yes. Well, come right in. We've been expecting you, Mr. Kirby. Now, this really is Mr. Kirby. I'm Alice's mother. This is Alice's grandfather, Alice's father, Alice's sister, Essie, and Essie's husband. Oh, there, now you know all of us. Give me your hat and make yourself right at home. Thank you. Oh, I hope I'm not keeping you off from dinner. No, 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 not at all. I have a tomato. Oh, no thanks. How about a piece of candy? Uh, no, no thank you. Oh, I forgot to introduce Mr. DePinna. Mr. Kirby, this is Mr. DePinna. Wasn't I reading about your father in the newspaper the other day? Didn't he get indicted or something? Oh, oh hardly that. He just uh, testified before the Securities Commission. You see, Mr. DePinna, I'm sure there was nothing crooked about it. In fact, Alice has been telling us what a wonderful man your father is. Well, we couldn't get along without Alice. She knows more about the business than any of us. Are you a little young, Mr. Kirby, to be vice president of a big place like that? Well, vice president, you know what that means. All I have is a desk with my name on it. Is that all? You don't get any salary? Well, a little. More than I'm afraid. I mean, more than I'm worth, I'm afraid. Oh, now you're just being modest. That's kind of dull to me, Wall Street. Do you like it? Well, the hours are short, and I haven't been there very long. Hmm. Fresh out of college, huh? Yeah, I just sort of kicked around for a while, but now the fun's over and I'm facing the world. Well, you certainly got a good start, vice president and a rich father. Yes, but that's hardly my fault. So now I suppose you're ready to settle down and get married? 
Now, Penny, I'm sure that Mr. Kirby knows his own mind. Oh, well, I wasn't making up his mind for him, was I, Mr. Kirby? Oh, it's quite all right, Mrs. Sycamore. He's good. Now, you mustn't rush him, Mother. Yeah. All I meant by it was that he's bound to get married and supposed to want to go get him. Well, here I am, Mother. I see you've all had time to get acquainted. Yes, we were just having a delightful talk about love with Mary. I'm so sorry I came down as quickly as possible. Darling, I didn't mind in the least. Oh, excuse us. I think we ought to keep going. That must be Madame Colin Coffin. When you get your vacation? Why, uh, last two weeks in August. I might take mine then, too. Really? <laughs> oh, what are you going to do?
Oh, Alice, you know what I'm saying. I'd love it if you were here. Oh, Tony, it'd be nice if you were here. You know what you're saying, don't you? What? That you'd rather spend the summer with me than anyone else. Was I? And if it's true about the summer, how would you feel about the winter? I guess, I suppose so. And you think you could see your way clear about spring and fall, Miss Sycamore? I might. Well, that's the whole year. We haven't forgotten anything, have we? No.
Oh, excuse me. I didn't know you folks was in here. It's all right, Donald. Reba just fancied some candy, and I thought I'd... Here it is. You don't want any, do you? No, Donald. Thanks. So, how was the evening? It was fine, Donald. Was the, uh, was dinner nice? Yes, Donald. And, uh, was the ballet nice? Yes, Donald. That's nice. How could you explain that to your father? Could you explain Grandpa? You couldn't, Tony. I love them, and I love you too. Alice, there's only one thing you've said all night that matters. You love me. That's so, isn't it? Uh, yes. Then I'd like to see real happiness around here. Young men getting engaged and calling. Well, what do I say? Well, first you say thank you to the man for getting engaged to you. Thank you, Mr. Kirby, for getting engaged to me. And then you tell him what it was about him that first took your girlish heart. Yeah. Well, it wasn't your charm, and it wasn't your money. I suppose it was the back of your head. Uh-huh. Yeah, I saw it in the office one day, and I just liked it. Uh, what happened when I turned around? Oh, I got used to it. <laughs> Thank you, Vidalis. You're pretty lucky, aren't you? I know I'm the luckiest girl in the world. I'm not so unlucky myself. <clears throat> oh, it's getting late. I ought to go. Good night. Good night. Oh, thank you, Vidalis. We work in the same office. And thank God and Vice President, I'll be able to dictate to you all day. <laughs> Dear Miss Sycamore, I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Tony, you're such a fool. Oh, and Alice, I want to see you first thing tomorrow in the drugstore. I'll have a million things to say to you. All right. And then lunch, and then dinner, and then lunch the next day, and dinner the next oh, day. Oh, Tony, what will people say? I have to get out sometime. In fact, if you know if your roof pops, I'd like to do some shouting. <laughs> we did some good work today, Mr. DeVilla. That's what? 500 Black Panthers, 300 Rilla Trees, and a dozen Jerry Kitty Bombers. Yes, a good night in. Oh, Alice. Alice, have you been home long? No, Father, I just got in. Did you have a nice evening? Yes, Father, it was lovely. Oh, Alice, I want to show you this new red flag for the Pinamea. Mr. Pinamea, could you turn off the lights, please? Now, if you'll look here. If you'll look here, it's the most beautiful red fire. Just wait and see. Did you have a good father? I did. Me and Mr. Pinamea made up all sorts of different fireworks and things. I want to look at the sides of the fireworks, Tony. Why would I? Now, wait, here it is, here it is, wait for it. Ah, there it is. Now, how does it look, Father? How does it look, Alice? Isn't it beautiful? Why, Father, it's the most beautiful red fire in the world. Yeah, <coughs> I like it. How long does it burn, Father? Oh, a good while. It's quite bright, isn't it? Yes, it is.